another form of distortion that arises when you drive nonlinear elements with two sinusoids. We're starting with our picture of a nonlinear amplifier represented by a Taylor series, and we're going to assume that our input is two sinusoids of similar frequency, uh, which is different than the single sinusoid we've been testing with so far. This input signal is called a two-tone test. We can substitute this input into our nonlinear amplifier model. And if we focus on the second order term of the model, we can, expand th we can expand that term into a polynomial. We find that two of the terms in the polynomial are familiar. They look like the second order harmonic distortion that we'd expect to see from each of the V1 and V2 tones. However, we also get a third term that is new. This term is referred to as second order intermodulation because it comes from the interaction of two input tones. We can use the angle addition formula, which I'm not going to go through the trouble of driving because I actually remember this one, to expand the second order intermodulation term to individual tones. Per the angle addition formula, those tones show up at omega 1 plus omega 2 and omega 1 minus omega 2, uh, as shown in this equation. Plugging our harmonic distortion and intermodulation distortion expansions into our model results in this big equation. Uh, as I've noted, we're still sleeping on what the third order term will look like once we expand it out, but we can learn a few interesting things from the second order term. The second order term contains the second order harmonic distortion, so it should be no surprise that those uh, terms turn into DC offset and second harmonics of each of for each of the input tones. However, the intermodulation also creates new frequency content. There's a term at omega 1 plus omega 2, which is close to the second harmonic, and there's a term at omega 1 minus omega 2, which is close to DC. These intermodulation terms are each bigger than the harmonic distortion term by a factor of 2. However, these tones aren't any worse than normal second order harmonic distortion because they're still about a factor of 2 away from the fundamental in frequency, so a sharp filter can reduce their effect. One exception is that some receivers, called direct down conversion receivers, are very sensitive to signals near DC, and second order intermodulation creates a signal near DC. We can define an IM2 measure of intermodulation. This measure is defined as the amplitude of the second intermodulation product with equally sized tones divided by the size of one fundamental input tone, or one fundamental output tone. It turns out to be twice as big as the HD2 distortion measure. The tones generated by the two-tone test are summarized in this graph. We can see the DC offsets, the sum and difference intermodulation terms, and the harmonic distortion terms. So in summary, uh, two tones in a nonlinear system result in intermodulation, which is an additional set of distortion products beyond harmonic distortion. Uh, and specifically, second-order intermodulation produces tones at omega-1 plus omega-2 and omega-1 minus omega-2. And second-order intermodulation can be best described using a IM2 product, which is the amplitude of the second-order intermodulation with V1 equal V2 divided by the amplitude of a uh, fundamental.